Thanks for joining us on the GHT Overland Podcast, where we visit with overland travelers around the globe, asking them about all the finer details of overland travel, learning from their experiences, passing on their tips, and enjoying their inspiring stories from the road. I'm Chris. And I'm Lisa. We are from Washougal in Washington State, known as the Gateway to the Columbia River Gorge. This is part two of our interview with Richard and Ashley with Desk to Glory, live from the Northwest Overland Rally. Let's pick up where we left off as Richard and Ashley were telling us how easy adjusting to life on the road was while adjusting to life back in North America was possibly the biggest challenge of all. I would say coming back home was a bit challenging, just getting used to living the north like in north america again after being gone for so long it's interesting that the getting used to living on the road took no time whatsoever really to like get comfortable you know like after a couple weeks we were like we definitely questioned what we were doing with our lives (laughs) and then after that you're like okay it just becomes a new normal and that's just your life yeah and then you get back here and it's just it's you see it differently you see everything differently and And relationships are different and your priorities are different um, so there's a bit of an adjustment, I think, that happens. Well, there's a lot that changes at home, right? That you yes. weren't there to, to kind of be a part of that process. Yeah, right. And we kind of discussed that a little bit yesterday, too, where it's like if there are family emergencies, sometimes you can't make it back. Yep. Um, thankfully, we didn't have We did, any, yeah. yeah. We didn't have any, like, major emergencies. And we had, like, the time we did come back, we had some warnings. So we were near a, near an international airport, so that made it easy enough for us to okay. get back. But... Yeah, because like we could have been two months away, and if you know one of our family members got sick and we wanted to see them, that wouldn't have been wouldn't have been that easy. Mm-hmm. So um, that can be hard. It can be, yeah. Okay. So border crossings. What tips do you have um, for our listeners in preparing for them? Mm-hmm. And like, how long should they plan on them to take? Is there like an average that you figured out? Central America is the most complicated and. They take the longest amount of time. I would say Life Remotely's uh, book yep. is was probably the most helpful thing for us. Okay. It's, uh, don't go there. It's not safe. You'll die. Yeah. So Life Remotely's ebook is Don't Go There. It's not safe. You'll die. Um, and it has step by step layout for each border crossing. And their book was great because it laid out every single border crossing uh, in Central America. I think, but after you do the first couple. Like it's, it was great to have the um, have the detail to give you a little bit of confidence going through because they're complicated. But after you go through the first couple, you start understanding what the process is, and we got confidence more or less. Yes, yeah, more or less to uh, like they'll be like confidence was a big thing too. Yeah, right? Like totally. once you kind of had it down, like oh okay, we just another thing. Yeah, because yes. before that, like the only border crossings we'd ever done, the only border crossing we'd ever done with our vehicle was Canada U.S. and that's what. That's close to what South America is like. It's very basic. Uh, yeah, it's a lot easier. It doesn't take as long. Uh, for for length, what was it? Two hours? I would say two hours on average. But going early is always a good idea, just in case. I mean, there was one border crossing like we early did. early in the day. Yeah, early in the day. There was one border crossing we did where... They were paving a bridge between the two countries, so we got stamped out, and our vehicle was stamped out, and then we were in no man's land. Okay. But the bridge was preventing us from entering into the next country. Okay. So we had to wait until they were done the paving before we could get it. So we were waiting for like... Three hours? Three or four hours. Oh, wow. Okay. In no man's land, waiting for them to pave the bridge. So going early is always good. And did you use iOverlander at all? We... For the first half of the trip, we did not because it didn't exist yet. Okay. Um, but for the second half, we did. Yeah, we traveled with uh, Sam while he was uh, writing the code for it, though. Okay, first yeah. half of the trip. <laughs> Awesome. And yeah. so is that something you'd recommend for other people to use? It's just so as a easy. Resource? Easy. So, yeah. Yeah. so you could leave today in your stock vehicle, as far as I'm concerned, and with, like, iOverlander on your phone and maybe Maps Me for navigation – even without a, a cell coverage or anything, both of the offline. And you could 
dri- start driving south and slowly piece your vehicle along the piece your vehicle together along the way and how you want to camp and how you want to build it out and you could make it no problem yet with those two apps maps me and i overlander you can have really everything you need just to like at least basically yeah to go to go and uh, have a good time then it's just about on your own like doing research on your own with blogs and everything else to see what else is there and travel books and everything and talk to as many people as you can good idea yeah. mm-hmm. right figure out what what like currently is happening yeah that's right? the thing is like if, and like as a little segue into like safety whatever because sometimes i've seen every once in a while some people ask that question yeah. um we never had any issues with like personal safety or anything um but the key was listening to people and listening to your gut because no matter where we went uh we get to a town or something and if there was an area we shouldn't go other travelers would tell us um we'd hear about it on like facebook group like pan america's travelers group on facebook um locals anybody we'd see they'd be like make sure you don't go this way or the travel guide we were looking at would say don't go to that yeah. area so usually you were fairly well warned unless bad timing happened or something yeah. but Okay, good. So that was our next question was safety on the road. So it's perfect. <laughs> Any other tips you've got for our listeners um, for safety and security on the road? So- good, well, and, and just with the trust in your gut, there were a couple times that we would end up at a place that we thought we wanted to camp and it just didn't feel right. So we just turn around and move, drive, on. move on or drive another four hours to where we were going. Okay. Anything on like currency changes um, that you've got that would be a good recommendation? On how you guys work that out? Uh, most of it we just did via credit card. Okay. Um, and yeah, it was the easiest way. That way we didn't have to carry a whole bunch of cash on us. Usually keep a little bit of U.S. cash in the car just in case. Okay. Because um, that's the... Nobody cares about our Canadian dollar. Oh. But with the U.S., you can usually <laughs> exchange that for something anywhere in the world. Okay. Um, or anywhere down in Latin America. Well, Ecuador also uses the U.S. dollar. Uses the U.S. dollar already. I think Costa Rica, but I'm not sure. And at the time in Argentina, we could get the blue dollar rate with it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then in regards to like security with the truck, um, we just tried. We had a lockbox in the back seat, so all of our valuables went in that. So it could it would take more than just a smash and grab to take anything out of it. And, and then, then leaving the cab as empty as possible, so if somebody looked in, they wouldn't see like a bag of stuff or just your stuff around. Okay. That applies just anywhere. Smart, yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, and we got broken into in Mexico, and the first thing we did was so they didn't take anything of value because all that was there was a bag, like a canvas bag with some like your glasses were in it, and yeah. so like no value to them at least. And so the next thing we did was like put the darkest tint we could on the side on the windows. Throw. We bought a club. At the Auto Zone in Mexico, and I mean, we probably should have done that before we left. Fair but <laughs> and the first, actually, that, we got that thirty dollars tint has lasted a long time. Though. It sure has. It sure has. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, it's like four M. So the yeah. first, we actually got broken into twice, but the first time we got our stuff back. So yeah, we were staying in Puerto Vallarta, and uh, we were in a hotel for Christmas for a gift from Richard's mom and we parked out on the side of the street and we asked the guy like the security guy who was working at the the i guess like condo or whatever we were staying at if it was a good place to park and he's like yeah it's fine and then he said yeah it's fine and yeah his shoulders yeah (laughs) which may or may not be a good sign (laughs) exactly so a couple days later we noticed that the well, the the back of the canopy was glass originally, and somebody just sma- like kind of smashed it and grabbed one of our Tupperware containers. And uh, camping gear. In it. Yeah, like nothing important, but just kind of a pain. So then we got that replaced with steel. Yeah. And then a couple of days later, long story short, uh, one of the security guards from one of the hotels nearby returned the stuff to us because I guess they had. They, they saw it happen, chased down the guys that stole oh, nice. it, okay. couldn't find us because they didn't know where we were staying, and then eventually it all worked out and we got our stuff back. So, yeah, that it's probably good, one dude. of the most amazing that things. Merry that Christmas. was Christmas. Yeah. So we back. always tell that p- story to people when they're, like, worried about going and traveling to other countries because, yeah, it's it was pretty magical. <laughs> okay. So navigation and communication – how do you guys make sure you know where you're at and you don't get lost? So we use paper maps through a lot of Mexico. 
I would highly recommend not doing that. I don't know why we did that. I, I think at the, we just didn't do much research and we didn't know, we didn't have any offline maps for, for the phone or whatever. We were just pretty green and didn't really know what we were doing. Yeah, it was fine. What do you use today? Maps me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can and download we were, everything. We were using the inReach. Yeah, we had a, the Delorme yeah. inReach. Uh, what's it called? That's it. Oh, okay. Yep. The Delorme inReach. It's just now Garmin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. So we use that on our trip to track our route and yeah. put so, some p- points in or communicate with family if we were in the middle of nowhere. And that's why Maps Me is pretty good is you could do planning en route, put your put the points in where we want it to stay, take them from our I Overlander, put them in so you could have maybe a few campsites in mind. Uh, True. So if we got to a town, we could just be like, check out the first one. No, that doesn't work. Go to the other one. Or maybe we want to go up in the mountains and check that one out, see if it was worthwhile. Yeah, um, I nerded out pretty hard with that. I would put like trailheads in like orange and then campsites in green and maybe a couple like grocery stores in another oh, color. Fun with it. it's good. <laughs> yeah. We definitely improved our game as we moved along. True. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good learning experience. Okay. Anything you do different now? So we have a, we still have paper maps and they're great as, right. a, as a backup but also they're so good around a campfire just sitting down and marking sure. out routes. Yep. Uh, atlases are same like atlases in, in better detail. Are good for That's true. When we were in Utah, we actually just used the paper map and I think Google Maps or something. Yeah, I just used Google Maps because we had cell coverage most of the time. And that was perfect. You can just highlight things on the map. So yeah. it, I guess it depends where we're going and if we're going to be offline or whatever. Yeah, and how long we're going to be off-road for. Yeah. But we found, like, even with Maps Me, is... It worked on every kilometer of the Laguna's route in the middle of nowhere, uh, Bolivia and Chile, with no cell plan, just with the GPS on the phone. Yeah. And it's turn by turn. So, yeah. uh, for a free app, it's hard to beat. Yeah, super hard to beat. Let's go through some onboard necessities. How much fuel can you carry, and how far does that take you? Mm. So, the orig- so the red truck, well, that's the important thing. Um, it, 16 gallon tank, um, and I carried an neck. We had, I had an extra five gallon jerry can that some, we put fuel in it twice and we needed it once. Okay. Um, and the range of the truck was 400 kilometers. So 300 ish okay. miles. How did you calculate your fuel needs? Um, I didn't fill up anytime you get a chance. Yeah, there's, there's fuel everywhere. Okay. Um, and if there wasn't like the Gunas route is the key, like you're at such a high elevation and you know, it's going to be 474 kilometers. Um, so I actually bought an extra five gallon jerry can that I just for, just that. for that and okay. then got rid of it. Okay. Um, I don't think it was supposed to it's plastic and didn't really seem like it was actually rated to hold fuel, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, at the time it, was, it got in the, dumped in the tank pretty quickly, okay. but at the time, like we didn't know what the train was going to be like. You're in four wheel drive for, oh, well, for our truck at high elevation. I left it in four low a lot of the time just cause it didn't have much power and you're in dirt. But um, I think the only time we needed extra fuel was the Lagunas route in Bolivia, and then Tierra del. F- was there a section in Tierra del Fuego down? There was like one weird section down there. Yeah, I think, and then the I think trans- we got away without needing it, but we brought it. Right, and then the Trans Labrador Highway. Yeah, was the other thing that we needed extra fuel for. Okay, how much water do you guys carry, and how do you manage um, filtration? So we bought water everywhere we went. Because we didn't want to uh, worry about it. The last thing we wanted to do is be sick and water. There were a lot of, like, every town had, a, like, water filtration. It seemed like every town, like, had a water filtration shop. So you just go in, you bring your container, they'll fill it up. A lot of the fire stations had water you could go to yeah. and fill it. So we would just bring, we had a, just a 20 liter, five gallon scepter container and a couple other little smaller containers. Okay. So may, max we would ever bring with us is 10 gallons. Okay. Um, and that worked out good for you? Yeah, it was fine. I, I, okay. I would have liked more, but truck's small, and you could always keep on adding extra weight to it, but for us it worked out fine. Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, do you use solar or a generator? And if you can give us like any details on how you manage your electrical needs. Yeah, so... We can go old truck versus new truck. <laughs> so old truck was a little 55 amp hour uh, house battery connected by a blue C relay to the alternator and also had an 85 watt solar panel. Um, so that powered the fridge, lights, and 
sometimes a little inverter. And sometimes some hair tools, such as a straightening iron or a curling iron. Yep. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Okay. Yeah, yeah so that's, the, that's what the inverter did most of the time. It happened. Yeah, charge batteries, wonderful. but mostly... Hair um, tools. Yeah, not, not for me. <laughs> not the hair dryer, though. Don't do that. <laughs> um, and then now, so we can straighten more hair. Uh, we have a 150 amp hour uh, full river battery and... Uh, another, we're going to use another Blue Sea isolator, charge from the, from the truck, and we'll do about, we don't have the solar panels yet, but it'll end up being a couple hundred watts of solar. So essentially we're, we're doubling what we had based on the experience. Okay. The, the small setup was, was great, but I would like to worry about the capacity less. Sure. Like, it's nice, it'd be nice not to have to look at the voltage gauge constantly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But trying to keep it as simple as possible, and the battery is just slightly heavier, panels are just slightly bigger, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's still fairly simple, but that'll be good. Okay. So we talked about your fridge. You're using a Dometic fridge. What's the size of the fridge you're using, and would you change the size that you use? Yeah, so we have a 50 right now, 50 liter. I port. think it's perfect. Yeah. It doesn't take up too much space. Uh, it's big enough for... All the things. All the things we need on the, like, for four, probably get four days out of it of, like, fresh produce. Okay. Um, for five days, I don't know. Um, we had a 37 on our trip to South America, and we just knew we wanted to go slightly bigger. You know, like, Tundra's a little bit bigger, so we have a little bit more space, mm-hmm. so fridge is bigger, solar's bigger, everything's just slightly bigger. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Same concept, just a little, little yeah, size increase. amp it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. That's cool. Anything we missed? Mm. No, I don't think so. That seemed very thorough. Yeah. Good questions. <laughs> Good, yeah. thank you. And and every other question you have is probably answered on the blog. We have like 130 blog posts from the very start of like us making the decision to leave to okay. getting to can- getting back to Canada. So a lot of stuff's on there. So tell us where people can find you guys. Like if they want to read the blog post, what's your website? How do they how do they find you? So our bo- website is uh, www destaglory.com and we're also on Instagram at destaglory or at destaglory underscore ash um, we do have Facebook as well okay. same name so everybody's going to be able to find you under destaglory totally yeah, right <laughs> yeah and our email is info at destaglory.com if you have questions phone too. number is six <laughs> 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 but, but honestly uh, I've had plenty of people call so if you email and you have like questions yeah like, like we, we're always if, happy to chat yeah if, you, if you're heading on a trip and you have a pile of questions sometimes a phone call is the That's easiest awesome. way or skype or, really yeah good. and we have a fax page I, I on like, the we website have a fax <laughs> yeah frequently asked questions yeah page. okay cool those over budget and a few other things too yeah okay any philanthropy giving back or inspiring others that you focused on during your trip or any recommendations, things that you've seen that other Overlanders can do during mm. their trips? Yeah, so we volunteered in Mexico and Honduras. Um, and, Honduras and the Muskoka Foundation. Yes. So in Honduras, we actually did a camera drive in back home. So we took a bunch of cameras down uh, to Honduras, and then we did a... Um, a photography workshop with the kids there. Oh, fun. Which was really fun. Yeah. So Richard just kind of went through like the basics of photography with them. And then we, we ran around town and had a checklist or treasure oh, yeah, hunt of things around. for That's them great. to take pictures of. And That's they great. just loved it. Um, and then they got to, you know, the, the cameras were donated, so they kept them. Okay. In. And that's like something totally new that they've probably not done before. Yeah. yeah. Right? Been able to touch a camera in the first, like, at all. So go down, take pictures of themselves or their family or their friends. There were a couple of kids awesome. that hadn't, like, taken a ride in a truck before either. So yeah. we, like, drove them around in the truck. Oh, and that was yeah. really great. Um, I'm trying to think of other things that we saw. Yeah, I think I would personally like to do more. We tried things. to do more. It, yeah, I think I think for if you plan on doing that on the road, you have to plan farther ahead than we planned. True. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there are a few times that we would like, last minute, like within a couple of weeks, we know we're going to be in a town and we want to do something, but they're looking at like a month or two months out for for planning. Um, so we could have done better. True. Sure. How you, and how would you be able to plan that? Like, is there a, a website or a resource people can go to? to see what they might be able to do in advance. Hmm. I don't know of that many 
uh, I can't remember who else we contacted. So Muskoka was the one foundation that we we worked with a couple times. And we got their name through some other overland travelers that had worked with them in the past. Um, I'm not really sure what other websites there are. Okay. So let's wrap it up with some fun facts about you guys. Any fun hobbies or things that you've done on the road that you've always wanted to do? So, so we brought up our trekking game. We did, so, yeah. So the we, hiking, so a lot more deal. hiking. Yeah, yeah, because we had never really spent more than one, one or two nights out in the bush, and by the time we were done Patagonia, we had done like six a week or seven track. day yeah. trek around, like O Track, cool. and it felt it was great. great. The other thing that I keep, uh, I kind of transition from nutrition to herbal medicine. And so picking up books along the way of like in Patagonia and being able to um, just like have a book of reference. So I could say, oh, that plant is this or that plant is that. And then when I got home, I decided to go to herbal medicine school. So kind of the inspiration of seeing all these different kinds of plants in different countries and just being able to recognize them inspired me to go to herbal medicine school. So. That was cool. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then same thing like with photography for me is for, it was like a semi pro kind of thing back home, I guess, where I was getting paid for some work. It was, but it's mostly a hobby. And then being able to transition that into kind of my, the only work I do right now is, okay. is, is photography or a little bit of marketing type work. And yeah. It's okay. been great. Cool. What keeps your co-driver occupied during those long drives? <laughs> Um, depending on where we are, yeah. sometimes we would just like chat the entire time, or sometimes we would just not a lot. not chat, and that was okay. Like we would, talk, yeah, we like silent, just driving for half an hour, and nothing's being said, and it's just yeah. Fine. Or I'd be planning, you know, like okay. what are we going to do when we get to the next destination? What are the best things to see? We started um, down in Patagonia when the stretches oh, of road were longer. Yeah. We started listening to a lot of audiobooks. That so, was great. So, my recommendation is to listen to the Martian when you're traveling the Laguna's route. Okay. And it looks like Mars everywhere around you. Um, <laughs> it's just, you're like immersed in the scene. It's fantastic. That's yeah. Cool. Any musical instruments on the road or around the campfire at night? No. No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> oh, what is your favorite drink in the morning to get you going? This awake juice I like. The coffee is the, I don't know, that's the go-to. I also like coffee a lot, and I also like tea a lot. So it depends. A favorite drink at night after a long day on the road? Whatever the local beer is. Yeah, what's oh, your favorite type of beer? Ooh, I guess that changes. So when we were in Mexico, uh, the Tecate is hard to beat. So it's just like alcohol like and water and a little bit of beer. I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's <laughs> a little bit of beer. It's like, it's and lime. Some lime. No. Yeah. Like lots of lime. No, it's fantastic. Um, we didn't drink that much on the road, but when we were in Argentina, they have these gin and tonics in a can. I guess I've heard of these in the UK. They're not in Canada. I've never seen them. Okay. So you don't have to like mix. I don't know. They were really good. Yeah. Pretty mixed. Okay. yeah. But, but then of course, like the wine in Argentina, of when, course. when you get a bottle of organic wine for like $3. $3. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, we found the same one back home when it was 25 so true. Fast difference. We should have yeah. bought a few cases. <laughs> what is your best advice to aspiring overlanders like us? Mm. For us, the easiest thing, like when we knew we wanted to travel by vehicle, we just did it, and we learned along the way. We didn't worry about anybody else. I try to do as little research as possible, but just as much as, as necessary to make sure that we could get on the road and be comfortable and actually like take the proper route and whatever. But we just did the, I don't know. We did the least amount necessary to, to do the job. I think like, I don't, don't get caught up too much in the details of it because it's going to work out and you're going to get Wi-Fi and you're going to be able to look it up. So don't focus too much on planning the entire kind of trip before you go and then getting bogged down and freaked out about all these little details, I guess. Okay. Yeah, everywhere you go, there's a major city with an off-road shop that sells awnings, that sells rooftop tents, that... Um, what else do we... So I, I built, like I said, I built the organized, the drawer in the back of our truck in a campground in Ecuador. Just, we learned after nine or ten months at that point that we wanted to improve our organization, so we just did it on the road. Everything's... 
available. Available. I think the other thing too is like go away for the weekend and see how that feels. Go away for four days, see how that feels. Go away for a week, see how that feels. And just keep kind of like, you'll know what you actually need and what you don't need. Or just, out, leave. Right? Or, or just leave. Or just leave. leave. And yeah. you'll figure it out on the road. It'll be fine. Our, as an, as so. an exa- like, we keep on telling people to go and like try things out and, and, and see, see how it works. But then again, our first night in the rooftop tent was our first night on the road. So we had never even opened it until it was our first night camping and heading to South America. That's um, true. And then you can, you're allowed to change your plans. Also, don't be afraid of that. So we yes. met, like our plan was to go to Panama and back. And we ended up in middle, like at the bottom of South America. We just changed our plan. We knew people who wanted to go to South America, but turned around in Belize or turned around in Guatemala because it just wasn't working for them. So just be your, like be true to yourself, know what you want and don't worry about anybody else. And just, yeah. Do you do you. Yeah. And don't get bogged down because yeah. it's about the trip yep. and the vehicle for us, I know this isn't for everybody, but for us, the vehicle was the vessel that got us to the places that we wanted to go. Its purpose was for us to travel. Yep. And it so, got you there. Yeah. And back. That's right. Right? And and for us, like, yeah. And it wasn't the most comfortable thing, like, for camping in for long periods of time. There's no inside space if it gets cold or rainy or anything. But we found that it's all right to stay in a hostel for 30 bucks a night every once in a while and, and <laughs> yep. you know, yeah. spread our stuff out, do some laundry, use the Wi-Fi, reset, and then head Continue out for another, on. like, few And it's, it's about the experience, right, of the trip itself, not so much the exact vehicle or gear you've got with exactly. you. So get out there, do it, get the experience, and that's great advice. Be true to yourself. Mm-hmm. Right, which we're going to need to change your plans. Yeah. yeah. Any of the resources or information that uh, people should check out? I don't think I so. Don't I don't think so. Everything's linked back to the blog. Yeah. Distillery.com. Um, and then you can find our contact information for all the, yeah, to get into on there. The, yeah, if it's, if it's not answered on there or you're having a hard time finding it, just send us an email or just con- there's a contact uh, page. Yeah. So. Thanks for your time, guys. Thank you. Thank I really you. appreciate it. It was a lot of fun talking to you. You too. Um, perfect. Thank you. Cool. And Ashley, thank you so much for taking the time to share your stories and insights. You're such an inspiration to so many people, and we've learned so much from your experiences. Yeah, thanks guys for taking the time to sit down and talk with us. That was really a treat. Super enjoyed it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So Chris, any thoughts on that episode? Well, the one thing that really stuck to me was you need to download The Martian on an audiobook form when you're taking the Laguna's route. So I've made that part of permanent memory and we're going to download the Martian when we take the Laguna's route. And all our listeners, you should do the same thing. Sounds like an an adventure. Oh, you know what they should do? They should take a video and then post it when they have Wi-Fi service as an Instagram story, Facebook story, or whatever story. Yeah. It'd be cool. And be sure and tag us and tag Dust to Glory. It would be a hoot. What about you, Lisa? What what stuck out to you? Well, I think during travels, it's important that the girls can feel girly. I thought the the, the hair thing was pretty funny from Ashley. I'd like to do my bangs. Feel like I'm awake. You know, we didn't get into why the the hair dryer was not a thing. So she said you had the, the, what was it? The uh, straightener. Hair straightener. Uh Uh-huh. The curling iron. And the curling iron. Yes. But no go on the hair dryer. It must take too much amperage. But they upped everything, basically doubled, just more in their newer truck. So hopefully she can do everything she wants to do to look pretty on the road. Yeah. Cool. Now, be sure to follow Dest to Glory on social media. Also, check out their blog. There is a ton of information in there. They've really done a great job of putting a lot of good information in there. You can either go to Desta Glory, click on blog on their website, or we've also got a link in their show notes. So you can just go to their show notes page. So obviously, ghtoverland.com. So like I was saying, it's a good idea to visit the show notes page on our website at ghtoverland.com. Click on podcasts, then select the Desk to Glory episode. All details and helpful links for this episode are already there for you. Then be sure to send your questions, suggestions, and feedback to ghtoverlandpodcast 
at gmail.com. If you have an Amazon Echo, be sure to tell Alexa, play the GHT Overland podcast. You can also add the GHT Overland skill to your news briefings, if you're into that hip stuff. Do you know what would be delicious? Let's see. You ask me this question every time. Last time it was steak and eggs. Um, A good salad actually sounds good. It does. If you have the perfect overlander recipe, something quick, easy, and delicious, or something that you think is worth any extra effort for special meals on the road, send them to ghtoverlandpodcast at gmail.com. Now, before you race off, it would mean the world to us, and I mean the entire overlanding globe. If you'd share the podcast, subscribe, rate, and review us. Give GHT Overland some love so we can reach as many Overlanders as possible, passing on priceless experience, knowledge, and stories of Overlanders doing good in the world. Thank you, and we will see you next Thursday for a shiny new episode of the GHT Overland Podcast. Go give us some podcast love with a subscribe, rate, and review. Bye!